Hi, my name is Maria Lindinger and I am the Pre-IB Coordinator as well as Head of IB Admissions uh, at Aarhus Gymnasium. I'm here today to tell you a little bit about the Pre-IB and IB program at Aarhus Gymnasium Tilst. So let's get started. The IB program is obviously an international program um, and because of that we obviously have an international profile uh, at the school. We have students and members of staff from numerous different nationalities uh, and as a school we have been a member of the Global High Schools organization here in Denmark for uh, many years. We value uh, student democracy. Uh, we have a very active uh, student council um, where the IB students are um, very present in. Um, and obviously we also value academic excellence. We strive to provide uh, the basis for a number of extracurricular activities um, because we feel that it is important that students develop um, both within and outside of the classroom. Our students have a very strong sense of community and especially our IB students. There is an excellent sort of IB spirit or an IB sense of community at the school. Um, and also because of our international profile, we are diverse uh, and we are very open-minded. There are a number of social events that characterize um, the school, but also sort of fill out the academic year um, that students readily get involved in. Some of them are uh, events that take place over a series of time and other things are sort of a one-off event. But most uh, importantly or notably, we're very proud of our International Day, which really is able to showcase um, the diversity that we find at our school, but also uh, Olympic Day and Ugly Day are events that really bring the students together and um, sort of make that sort of sense of community very tangible. But more specifically, so what is the IB? The IB is an international program um, that is uh, available worldwide um, and specifically it is designed to challenge and make the students think critically about their learning and uh, in a global context. So there are two sort of entry points into the IB program at Aarhus Gymnasium Tilst. Um, most of our students come in through the pre-IB year and the pre-IB year is a qualifying year for the diploma program. So it's sort of a year where the students um, prepare themselves both in relation to academics but also in relation to being taught in English. That can be new for a lot of students coming from the Danish system. Nominally it corresponds to the first year of the Danish uh, STX program. Um, however, what we do in the pre-IB uh, subjects and also in some of the extra ac activities that they do uh, seeks to prepare them for the challenges that await them in the IB diploma. However, at the end of the pre-IB year, there is an option for students to switch into um, a different, uh, a da another Danish youth educational program if they realize that perhaps the pre-IB wasn't quite the right choice for them. Um, in that case, they will just have done their first year uh, in English. However, most of our students, um, by f almost all of our students, they move into the diploma program which is sort of the two-year program that qualifies students for um, Danish and international tertiary education. Looking at the pre-IB, um, this model shows us what subjects um, the students will have. Um, the bluish hexagons represent the subjects that they have on a regular basis. Um, there are the languages, um, the humanities subjects, we have uh, maths as well as the science subjects, a creative subject, and PE. For some of these, um, so for example, English and history, all students take English and history, and in hexagons where there are multiple subjects listed, there is a choice, either between two uh, different subjects or between the level of teaching. 
So on top of the bluish hexagons that students have on a weekly basis, the students will also start out with general linguistics and general science and sort of an introduction to language teaching and an introduction to the science subjects. Um, and these are parts of the Danish STX program. We obviously do them in English and then we have tweaked them slightly um, to mirror, for example, um, some of the group two teachings, but also the group four project in the IB. Students also do pre-IB versions of IB core requirements. So we have the pre-TOK class um, activities and we also have pre-CAS. Every year we have about, uh, we have two pre-IB students with about 25 um, no, sorry, we have two pre-IB classes with about 25 students in each. So there are a good um, bunch of pre-IB students and they have uh, subjects both within their regular class but also across their two classes. So the pre-IB students will get to know uh, the other pre-IB students very much or very well, which very much prepares them for uh, the following year when they have subjects um, across the entire cohort. So throughout the pre-IB, we will be, the student will be testing it out to see whether this is the right choice for them. We will also be assessing um, the students to find out whether we feel that it is the right choice for them. The IB program is an academically challenging program. Um, but it is not just about being smart. It is also very much about having a willingness to learn, um, but also being dedicated to learning um, and developing as a person. And we need to see whether that has started already in the pre-IB, because otherwise it will be very tough road ahead. So throughout the pre-IB, we are assessing the students to decide whether they are able to move into the pre-IB um, after, into the IB after the pre-IB. And this is what awaits them. The pre -I, uh, sorry, the IB program takes its starting point in the learner profile. The IB learner profile consists of 10 qualifications that the students or that the program seeks to impart into the students. So this would be open-mindedness, inquisitiveness, uh, being um, knowledge seekers, and being risk takers, for example. Um, otherwise, the students will choose six subjects, one subject from each of the six groups. Um, three of these subjects will be taught at higher level and three of them at standard level. And having a higher level subject means that you have more hours of teaching, allowing you to um, go a little bit deeper with the knowledge or subject material. Other than the six subjects, students also have to complete the core requirements. That means they have to complete an extended essay, a 4,000 word essay in one of the subjects uh, of their choosing. So together with the supervisor, they will find a, an appropriate research question and write um, an, a research uh, paper in uh, their own time. They also have to complete the theory of knowledge class. So this is effectively a seventh subject that all students take. And the theory of knowledge class is very focused on knowledge. So what is knowledge? How do I know things? How can I be certain that the things that I know are true? So students and their teachers look at different ways of knowing, but also within different fields of knowledge. And lastly, students also have to complete the CAS program in order to pass the, um, the IB. The CAS program stands for Creativity, Activity and Service, and it is an opportunity for students to move learning from an academic setting, so from within the classroom or from away from your books and out into sort of the real world. The idea is that students will develop um, as people, as, as sort of well-rounded people, um, outside of the classroom or outside of an academic setting. So they have to complete different types of activities. Creativity would be something like participating in the school musical. It would be um, maybe starting up your own after school band. It could be um, extracurricular art classes, many different things. 
Activity, it means using your body. So you can join the school football team. You can join um, the CAS badminton club. You can also um, design your own or sort of pay, take part in a mindfulness course or maybe even design your own fitness program um, that you can follow. And lastly, service is very much about paying back to the community. So social service and, and other activities that, that benefit others. Uh, this could be volunteering at a local thrift shop. It could be uh, helping out um, maybe uh, underprivileged kids or even helping out in the local kindergarten. There are lots of different activities and we are there on site to help you uh, navigate them. So the core requirements are obligatory on top of your six subjects. Um, and let's have a look at these subjects. So within each of the six groups, we offer a number of subjects. So group one, um, studies in language and literature. This is the language that you are the strongest in. So native or near native speaker. Um, we obviously offer Danish literature. And then we offer two different types of English classes, English literature and English language and literature. We also offer a self-taught program for students who have a language that they are the strongest in other than English and Danish. In group two, language acquisition. So these are the languages that you are still in the process of learning. You have not yet mastered these. We offer English, we offer Danish, English, French and German B. And the B signifies that you have had teaching for about three to five years previously. So you're not beginners, but you're also not yet advanced, sort of intermediate. We also offer Danish, French and Spanish ab initio. And ab initio is just a fancy way of saying beginners. So there are three beginner languages and four options for continued languages. Um, over here in group three, individuals and societies, we offer global politics, history, psychology, and economics. And in group four, we have the sciences, biology, chemistry, and physics. I think that most people are familiar with those. We also offer a science called ESS, environmental systems and societies. Environmental systems and societies is sort of a combination between biology and geography together, where we look at man's influence on the environment, but also the environment's influence on man and society, so how they uh, sort of coexist. We have uh, a whole group dedicated to math. Uh, there are two different math classes, applications and interpretation, analysis and approaches. And lastly, in group six, we have the arts. Uh, students are able to choose between visual arts or music. Or, and a lot of students make use of this option, they can choose an additional subject from groups one to four. This allows students to put their own sort of personal spin on their uh, education, allowing them maybe to have two sciences if they are more interested in the sciences, or maybe two humanities subjects if that's where their interests or their strengths lie. So there are a slight different uh, possibilities of tweaking the program to suit your strengths uh, and your interests. And we are obviously on site to guide um, students about any subject choices or subject questions that they might have. This next slide shows um, the results of a investigation that we did based off our 2018 applications uh, into the IB program. Um, if you have a look, you can see that 48% of our 2018 applicants identified as being Danish. That can be anything from having two Danish parents to having one Danish parent um, to perhaps being having a different nationality but having lived here for, for a very long time. So we've sort of put Danish in inverted commas because that can mean a lot of different things. But about just uh, over half of our applicants um, come from a, different, a different nationality. And over here to your left, you can see the nationalities that were represented uh, in our 2018 applicants. Obviously, this varies a little bit from year to year, but the, um, the variety in itself um, remains the same from year to year. 
So what is it that you can do with an IB diploma program? It is a hard work. It's two years of, of hard work, um, but it is also a very rewarding program. We hear this from our alumni um, who sort of uh, breathe a sigh of relief at the end when it's over, but also later on once they start their um, different educational programs, they often come back and they tell us Yes, it was hard work, but I feel very much prepared for what I am doing, um, doing now. So over here to your left, you can see a list of uh, some of the things that some of our um, uh, alumni have gone on to do, uh, gone on to study. And I do realize that this list represents very much um, sort of different options within Europe, but we also have a number of students um, or numerous students who pursue further education in, uh, in the States. In order to apply for the IB program, if you are applying for the pre-IB program coming from a Danish um, school, you will have to apply through optese.dk as well as OpenApply, which is our application platform. If you are applying directly into the IB program um, and you come from um, abroad or have been out of Danish school for a while, then you only need to apply via Open Apply. But you are welcome to contact us for any uh, guidance on the application process, um, both in relation to what you need to have ready in order to apply, um, but also where you need to apply. And the IB team consisting of uh, the student counselors, myself, and the IB coordinator, we are on site ready to uh, guide and counsel you in any way that we can. Uh, please do not hesitate to contact us if you have any questions about the contents of the program, whether it be pre-IB or IB, um, about the application process, about the school, or maybe even about your options after um, completing the IB program. So lastly, I just want to say thank you for listening. Um, and I hope to see you in the future.